Hello, everybody. This is the talk for the paper Time and Space Optimal Discrete Clock Synchronization in the Beeping Model. In this talk, we are investigating the behavior of fireflies, which are able to display synchronous flashes of light to attract mates. Uh, a related problem for this in the area of distributed computing would be the discrete, uh, discrete clock synchronization problem, uh, which is very important because all the nodes of a distributed system somehow need to keep a common notion of time, for example, in order to start algorithms. So what's our model? As the input, we cons uh, consider a connected graph G, where each of the nodes in G uh, correspond to a single firefly or regarding the uh, area of distributed computing, they correspond to a single node or process. Also, we assume a fixed period T out of the natural numbers, and we assume that each node has a clock value out of the set zero and T minus one. This clock value may be arbitrary initially. For communication, we consider the beeping model, meaning that communication goes by in synchronous rounds, and in each round, each node is allowed to either beep or listen. A beeping node uh, will send its beep to all of its neighboring nodes, which will recognize that beep only in case they are in the state listen in the same round. Also a node that is in the state listen uh, without, having to uh, without having a neighbor that beeps in the same round does not recognize any beeps at all. The goal is for a protocol to synchronize all the clock values such that eventually every node will beep at the same round every t rounds. So for example, whenever the clock value of the nodes reaches zero. And this talk is basically divided into two parts. The first part uh, consists, uh, considers arbitrary wake-ups, uh, where initially all the nodes are in a well-defined inactive state, and an adversary may activate the nodes in arbitrary rounds. And upon activation, uh, a node has to start its protocol. The second part then considers uh, self-stabilization, which means that there is no adversary anymore, but the state in which the nodes initially are is not necessarily well-defined anymore. So we start with the first part, arbitrary wake-ups. So recall, initially all the nodes are in this initial well-defined state uh, with all nodes being inactive. And our protocol eventually has to synchronize all the nodes. Now, first of all, what does arbitrary wake-ups mean? So the adversary uh, may consider to activate or wake up a node at a round of, it, uh, of its choice. And a node getting activated means that it sets its clock value to one and beeps in that round. Also for inactive nodes neighboring the active node that beeps, they will also become active in the next round, meaning that they also will set their clock values to one and switch to state beep. Aside from this, this basically this beep signal will spread throughout the graph, where still the adversary may consider to activate other nodes, li nodes lying in other parts of the graph. So eventually we should arrive at a state where all nodes are active, but the clock values of the nodes are not necessarily in sync yet. And this is where our synchronization protocol has to come into place. So for related work, um, we basically refer to the paper of Alistair et al, uh, who basically investigated the very same problem as we do. Uh, and they gave an algorithm that runs in time of t times d, where d is the diameter of the network. Uh, in their algorithm, the parameter t, so the period, um, had to be a fixed value that is at least four times the number of nodes in the system, which is basically why this algorithm is, well, not optimal. So in our protocol, we have been able to fix this by having the parameter t only be a constant that is at least four. And therefore, we obtain a runtime of only of d rounds for synchronization. So how does our protocol work? First of all, we fix a, parameter, a period t that is at least four. 
And at each node v, um, we have two variables, one variable indicating the state of v. So the node v may either be inactive, beeping, or listening. And we have another flag induced that is either true or false. Initially, that's, this flag is set to, to false. And the idea of this flag is to basically, once a node got induced by another node, meaning that it recognized a beep from another node, this flag will be set to true. And this will mean that the next time this node will beep is not the next, uh, the next time its clock value got set to zero, but it's reach, uh, the next time the clock value reaches a certain checkpoint. And for this, we have to define the checkpoint, first of all. Um, so intuitively, we want to define a set of checkpoints by considering all the possible clock values and uh, setting each fourth clock value to be a checkpoint. For, an, for example, if we set the period to 19, then we would have checkpoints 0, 4, 8, and 12. We don't have the checkpoint 16 here because the distance between the checkpoint 16 and its next checkpoint 0 is only 3, uh, violating the second condition of the checkpoint set here. So now, how does the protocol work in detail? First of all, for a node that's inactive, as I already mentioned, once it gets activated, it sets its clock value to one and its induced flag to true. For a node that is in state beep with clock value delta, it sets its clock value delta to delta plus one and sets its state to listen for the next round. For a listening node, we basically have two cases. In the first case, uh, we uh, the listening node does not. Re uh, the, in the first case, the listening node receives noise. Then it first checks if its clock value delta is equal to the value of some check uh, checkpoint C minus one. If that is the case, then it sets its clock value to delta plus two for the next round, and its flag induced to true. Otherwise, it just regularly sets its clock value. Delta by, uh, to delta plus one. If the listening node, on the other hand, does receive no noise in that round, it also first checks if that clock value delta is equal to the clock value of sub, uh, some checkpoint C minus one, and if its induced flag is, uh, is true. In that case, it increments its clock value by one and switches to state beep, and furthermore, inc uh, switch, uh, sets its induced flag to false. Also, in case the, de the clock value delta plus one is equal to zero mod t, then it just sets its clock value to zero and its state to beep. If none of the above two conditions are true, it only increments its clock value delta by one while remaining in the listening state. And for this protocol, we are able to show that basically it is able to synchronize all the nodes within O of d rounds. And to briefly sketch the analysis to you, um, due to time constraints, we are basically able to show that we make progress every four, round, four to seven rounds, depending on whether the period t is a multiple of four or not. Progress in this case means that every four to seven rounds, more nodes get into sync with each other. And ultimately, we are, we are able to show that within at most d, uh, that we only need to make at most d times progress. So overall, with having these two facts in mind, we can just compute the overall runtime of our protocol, which is basically in the order of d. Now on to the second part, self-stabilization. Recall now we don't have this well-defined initial state anymore. So this means initially all the nodes may have different clock values and also different initial states. So may, some nodes may be in state beep or also some nodes may be in state listen. And ultimately, you, you still want all nodes to get into sync. So for related work, the paper that is closest to our work is the, uh, the paper from DISC 2015, uh, where the authors are able to give a self-stabilizing synchronization protocol in case the network is a clique. Um, however, they consider it a more powerful variant of the beeping model because in their model, uh, each node is able to basically count the number of beeps 
uh, it has received in each round by the neighboring processes. Now our results are the follows, following. Unfortunately, we are able to show that the cost for self-stabilization is quite high, meaning that we are able to show a lower bound of omega of max T n rounds for any self-stabilized for any self-stabilizing protocol. On the positive side, we are also able to extend our protocol from the first part in order to be self-stabilization as self-stabilizing with a runtime of O of max T n rounds. For this, we only had to increment the period uh, from four to five. And also this protocol works for, for, works for arbitrary connected pro uh, topologies and not only for click. So first of all, how do we show the lower bound? So how do we show the lower bound of omega of max Tn? What we are basically able to show is that if nodes are running their algorithm on a finite state machines with k states, then we can construct a graph with k plus one nodes that cannot synchronize. The idea basically behind this is that a node, we assume that a node recognizes a beep in each round, and this would imply that the node is a, would basically traverse an infinite path of states um, within its sta uh, state machine. And since the number of states is finite, we know that this path has to contain, contain a cycle. Now, depending on whether, well, one, uh, whether a state in the cycle is a beep state or whether there is no beep state at all in that cycle, um, we are able to give graph constructions for which we are able to show that the node is not able to break out of the cycle anymore in order to synchronize with all the other nodes. So this result implies that for a graph with n nodes, we need at least n states at each node, meaning that in the worst case, we would have to traverse all the n states, uh, which means that we need n rounds for this. And this gives us our lower bound. Also, since you're made, you might be wondering why there is a t in the lower bound, there are some very simple arguments uh, for this t because you just have to consider the connected graph of two nodes um, that basically both think uh, they are in sync already. Now for the extension for the protocol in order to become self-stabilizing, uh, um, what we do is basically we add two additional states, namely the states pulse and lock. So a node, generally we want each node to run the part one protocol, but once a node recognizes four consecutive beeps, or once it recognizes anomalies after O of max T n rounds, it switches to the state pulse. Recognizing anomalies means that a node will get induced after O of max T n rounds. So basically, it will recognize a beep from one of its neighbors. Now being in the state pulse means that a node will beep for, four for the next four consecutive rounds until when it then will switch to the state lock. In the state lock, the node will basically do nothing for four times n rounds and then switch to the state inactive. And the state inactive now basically behaves the same as the inactive state in the first part of our protocol, which means that, well, once the node recognizes a beep from one of its neighbors, it will become active and run the part one protocol. And otherwise, it will become active after four times n rounds have passed. So in order to prevent nodes that are basically correctly executing the part one protocol, um, in order to prevent them to still hear four consecutive beeps, we now have to set the period T to be a value of at least five. For the analysis, uh, just to briefly sketch this to you, um, consider the following example. Um, so first of all, you can see these two connected components that are green, um, which basically indicate nodes running the part one protocol. And for these connected components, what may occur is that there is a node that will recognize an, an abnormally, which then will force the node to go into state pulse. Now the state pulse will, broadcast, uh, will spread among all the nodes in the same connected component that are, in, that are not in the state lock. 
So meaning this, this will basically imply that all of these nodes will eventually then switch to the state lock. In the meantime, all the nodes being in the state lock before, uh, may then switch to the state inactive, which means that also after a certain amount of time, there's a node that becomes active and that spreads its active signal to all the other inactive nodes. Now this could force some node of the previously connected component running the part one protocol uh, to, well, recognize that normally, which will also then force that node to go into the state pulse. And then the same thing happens as before, namely that all nodes in the connected component that are not in the state lock will switch first to this pulse state and then to lock state. Ultimately, we are able to show that after O of max T and rounds, we arrive at a state where all the nodes are in the state lock. Then after, a certain, after another O of N rounds, uh, we can show that there is a state where all the nodes have switched from the state lock to the state inactive. And from this point on, we basically are uh, running the protocol as if we were running the protocol in the first part, because um, now, after a certain amount of rounds, a node may activate itself since it has been in the state inactive for four times n rounds. And this activation basically corresponds to the activation of the adversary from the first part, because now this activation spreads among the whole graph. So eventually each node will then run the part one protocol uh, correctly, meaning that eventually this part one protocol execution is now able to synchronize all the nodes after another O of D rounds. So overall, the runtime would be O of max T N rounds for the overall protocol. So to sum up our results, um, the first part, we investigated asynchronous wake apps, um, where we were able to give a protocol that runs basically optimally in O of D rounds. And in the second part, we investigated the problem regarding self stabilization, where we first showed the slower bond of omega of max t n rounds, and then um, additionally gave a protocol running in O of max t n rounds, which basically meets the lower bond. And that is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention.